the heck is this goth thing that everybody keeps asking me about? Flora in December, that's another longtime viewer. Hey, congrats, what's been your favorite podcast or YouTube video you've done so far? Which one was your least favorite? Man, probably my least favorite podcast off the top of my head. The least favorite podcast episode I ever did was the one on Alien Sex Fiend. That's always been a band that I've always been kinda on the fence about, really enjoying. And I feel like I just did it because so many people requested it constantly. And that's never the reason you should make a video or you should make a podcast. Uh, so probably, probably the podcast I did on Alien Sex Fiend. I, yeah, as you can tell, even listening to that episode, we weren't a real big fan of him anyway. Uh, and it's still, it's, it's probably my least favorite episode. Probably my favorite episode, I don't know. I mean, I really enjoyed some of those first ones. I'd probably say that the number one favorite podcast I did was the one when we did a tribute to David Bowie when we did the David Bowie movies. And I, I really enjoyed doing that episode uh, and talking about some of the ridiculousness of the labyrinth and you know, the manifold to earth. I, I really like those discussions that we had. It's fun to talk about things that you're passionate about and that you really enjoy, and that was one of those. Uh, so probably the David Bowie episode, but I also really like when we did Susie and the Banshees, that whole series of podcasts was really fun. Uh, as far as videos go, uh, probably my favorite video that, it, I mean, it's, it's a recent one, but it's one that I'm really proud of, is the Goth Disney video and the Goth in Unusual Places because it took me so long to make those. In fact, I had the idea to make those videos long before I actually finished them. In fact, the Goth Disney videos, I probably had planned that well over a year before and I had written down and had all these notes. And then I really sat down and worked on it. I was very happy with the way it turned out. Uh, so probably my most Goth Disney movies are the Goth in Unusual Places. Uh, and as far as my least favorite videos, I, it's got to be the Goth Guide to Online Dating. I was not happy with how it turned out. I felt like it was rushed for a number of different reasons. I just wasn't happy with it. And I, you know, I may eventually redo it. I was not, I, I really am not satisfied with that Goth Guide to Online Dating. And you know, a few of my first videos, definitely the Gothic Guy, the online dating is my least favorite video. The Gothic Misfit asked, what made you start a YouTube channel in the first place? Who were your idols and people you looked up to on YouTube? Uh, so I kind of went into that a little bit, you know, why I make YouTube videos is because I, I didn't see the content that I wanted to see. And as far as YouTube idols and stuff, I don't know that I necessarily have a YouTube idol or somebody that I really look up to. I mean, I don't really have, I don't really have idols to begin with, like it's not, I don't really idolize people that much. Uh, I find things that, you know, they do and I like and I try to adapt them, you know, to my life because I have a very different life than uh, everybody else and, you know, I have my own experiences. Um, but I guess I, I really enjoy um, this guy called Ross Scott who makes videos. I just like the way that he talks about things, you know, whether it be something that I'm interested in or not, if he always finds a way to make it interesting. I don't know, I actually have YouTube idols. I guess anybody that can release a video every week, you know, that's good. I am like, really look up to that, that they can do that. Um, so I guess consistent people, I can't really think of who it is. Maybe I'll put something else, but yeah. Oh, and greetings and congrats from the UK. Nice. Mitch Quintana asks, are you a fan of the cult? How about early incarnation, death cult, and southern death cult? Do you like the band All About Eve? How about the mission? What do you do for a living? Oh, that's, that's weird. Super Nerd 4245 asks, what are your thoughts about band southern death cult, death cult, and the cult? Somebody else asked that question? Wow, that's crazy that two people asked that question. Wow, okay. Like I said, I do for a living, I work in art. And doing okay at it. Uh, are you a fan of the cult, death cult, all that? Yes, I really enjoy the cult and especially death cult. Um, actually, fun fact, the last podcast that me and Robbie Gore recorded was an entire episode on the cult and death cult and southern death cult. Uh, but it was never released. We were both moving in a different direction already. And 
yeah, the episode is unreleased. I don't even know if I still have the episode anymore, but I know that there was an episode recorded on the cult, but it wasn't released. As far as All About Eve and the mission, I really, really like the mission. In fact, you can listen to the Gothcast episode about the mission. And in fact, I've tried to record a, a, an episode, like a video review of God's Own Medicine multiple times, but I've always ditched it because it's never like good enough for my quality. Um, and then All About Eve, yeah, I like them to a lesser extent. I think they're a really good band. Not necessarily my thing every single one of their releases, but yeah, if you watch my record collection, you can see I even have some of the All About Eve albums. So Nathan Wellborn asks, hello, I'm curious what you think of Killing Joke. If you enjoy them, what's your favorite album from them? Thanks for the great videos and keep it up. I will keep it up and thank you for enjoying the videos. I do like Killing Joke. I haven't listened to all their albums. Like I haven't done an in-depth thing like I usually do with most bands. Uh, my favorite album is probably the cliche, it's nighttime. It's an awesome album. Uh, but who knows, I'll probably discover some more stuff from them that I like in the future. Miss Murder asks, do you have any other interests instead of goth? Kind of answered that. So yeah, lots of stuff. Dakota asks, who are your personal favorite fellow goth YouTubers? Obviously, you know, I <laughs> I know Cemetery Confessions and Count, you know, watch his stuff. Uh, Ali Sound and Darker I've done some collaborations with. Probably if you like my content, you'll somewhat find her content interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily a crossover directly, uh, but she has been featured in my goth guide to Valentine's Day. That's Ali Sound and Darko. Swinging DeVille is really good. I like the way he approaches his content. Uh, Snowy Lather, which I wouldn't necessarily agree with everything she says. And I know some people have some problems with the way she thinks about goth, but uh, yeah, some of her videos are, are really good. Eternal Winter does some cool stuff. She does shorter videos. Uh, Midnight Owl, I really like Saikara's content. Uh, I, I just find what she says very interesting. Veruni Khan and Victoria Fashion. Of course, I did an hour-long interview with Victoria Fashion. I think she's very nice. I like her content. She hasn't uploaded for a little bit, um, but heck, I'm, I'm just as bad about that, uploading consistently. So I guess we're even more similar than I thought. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a quick rundown. You know, I tend to watch probably everyone you expect. You know, I, I watch and keep my eye on, you know, it's Black Friday and Toxic Tears and Lair of Voltaire and stuff. I even used to watch like Sebastian Combine. I wouldn't say that all of their content caters to me directly, uh, but I always keep my eye out and I, I look for the videos that they come out with that I find interesting. You know, if that's a certain vlog or a certain thing that they cover. Um, so I'm always kind of keeping my eye on everyone in Goth YouTube but I don't watch every video that comes out by every goth YouTuber uh, just because it doesn't always appeal to me. But those are my favorites, like Midnight Owl, Veruni Khan, Victoria Fashion, Alessandra Darko, you know, all those ones I said, those I always kind of am keeping a closer eye on. QNone says, congrats on 2K subscribers. Thank you. What goth influence film do you feel is overlooked or underappreciated by the community? Uh, probably The City of Lost Children or Delicatessen. I really like both those movies. Uh, same director and some of the same actors. Uh, I really like those. I think they're really dark. Uh, maybe Dark City. That movie starts off really great. I don't really like the ending of that movie as much, uh, but I think it's a. I think that movie has one of the best starts to any movie ever. Uh, and then my personal favorite that I like that's a really creepy film uh, and this kind of goes into the like dead animal bones and stuff is the 1988 I think it is Alice film it's an adaptation of Alice in Wonderland it's so creepy it's so good and I've seen it a whole bunch of times uh, and it's not in English it's like in Polish or something uh, and I love it I think that's a totally underrated film I think because it's not it's not a simple watch it is very different uh, but I think, I think it's, I think it's underrated, honestly. I think it's, I think it's so amazing. Um, so that's my choices. So, City of the Lost Children, Delicatessen, Dark City, 1988 Alice. Uh, that's the person's name. It says, are there any styles that juxtapose goth that you really like? E.g. I like 70s disco. Kind of like mod or like, 
you know, I, I, like 70s fashion stuff. Uh, I had a job where I would transfer film, like old celluloid film, like 16 millimeter and 8 millimeter film. I saw a lot of like 60s and 70s. So I, I guess I kind of like that fashion just from seeing it so much. The yellows and browns and like, you know, yellow cars and cool. I really like like the Gremlin car and stuff. Um, I also really like like Britpot fashion. Some of it, I mean, it's hard to say. I, you know, I, I like that look. I mean, that's just not to say, I also don't like punk. You know, I like punk fashion, uh, but I don't, I don't love it all. I guess, I guess if I had, I guess if I had to narrow it down to just like two kind of, I would say like, like 70s fashion and like some punk fashion. Uh, Black Yarn says, what's your favorite Jared Majesty song? Here they all are. That is what I like. Jared Majesty is great, especially, especially the most recent album. Really good. Two Eba says, "What did you study in college? Are you close with your family? What do they think of the goth way of life?" Uh, what did I study in college? I studied film and art, and then after college, I went into art, and I've pretty much been in art for the most part. Uh, I have done jobs in between, but pretty much since college, for the most part, other than like yeah, working for like a mortuary. Uh, I've pretty much had creative jobs, so uh, at least at least a job that I've had long term has been pretty much that. Uh, are you close to your family? Yes, I am extremely close to my family. I think that's probably surprising for a lot of people, especially since people just imagine that goth people or anybody who's in anything spooky is very distant from the family. Uh, I am Italian and I am very close to my family. Uh, we also drive each other crazy. Uh, and what do I think of the goth way of life? I would say my grandma really does not understand or did not understand for the longest time why I was really into dark and spooky things. I think she's kind of come around. She's kind of seen the benefit of, or she definitely understands more of why I relate to that. You know, she understands what elements I see in these things in myself. And I, you know, I've even had to, I've had to have discussion with my family. You know, it's, it's hard to have a discussion with the family to say, you know, I just had to compare it, like say, hey, you know, you enjoy this, you know, you enjoy this particular book or this particular movie because you find an element of it that you either desire for that in your life or relates directly to your life. And it's something that you want for yourself that you see in this media or that speaks to you directly. And I, I have to say, you know, this stuff, while it may seem totally outlandish to you or it may seem like something that's totally, I don't know, evil or something like that, this speaks to me in a very direct way because I have emotions that are this way and I have things that appeal to me that are this way. And uh, it's been a few discussions, you know, over time. There's definitely some things where sh they look at and they just totally don't get it. They can't even see why it'd be interesting to me. Um, it's kind of actually become a written joke that like the more ridiculous a movie sounds or something like that, my dad's like, oh, you'd like that. You know, I grew, I grew up with two brothers and, and everybody in my family was very different. Like we were all into very different things. There was some crossover with certain stuff, but for the most part, we all had very different interests and we're all very different personality wise. And I think because of that, like, cause I, I mean, we had three teenage brothers in a house, right? And because we're all into different stuff, I think my parents were just kind of like, as long as it, you're not hurting yourself and it's just something that makes you feel better, then that's cool, you know? Um, but they definitely scratch their head at some of the things that I'm into. Olivia Bronte says, I have said that name right, but that's Olivia. We've had many discussions. She's been watching and enjoying for a very long time. Hello, Olivia. Uh, top five completely non-goth related bands slash artists. Can you hear that? Can you hear that dog barking? There's this dog that barked constantly. It's very annoying. It is not my dog. My puppies don't bark that often. They are very lazy, which is exactly the way I like it. In fact, I think Gunner is under, asleep under this chair. Uh, so that would be Nickelback, Creed. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, probably in no specific order, it would probably be Smashing Pumpkins. And they kind of have a relation to goth, but I'll, I'll probably talk about that in a different video. Um, Pixies, so Smashing Pumpkins, Pixies. The Flaming Lips, especially the earlier stuff, I, I thought it was really cool. It's like really different. Oasis, really like Oasis. I like what they did. I, you know, I even like some of Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds and, and Liam Gallagher's, you know, new stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. Is that five? Maybe I'll just put like another one right here. 
That would be my number five. Nah, but especially like the Pixie Smashing Pumpkins and Flaming Lips and you know, I, I really like what those bands do and how they change their sound a lot. Fun Dash Pegasus asked, what is your most favorite band? Tabo Negative, bar none. Absolutely Tabo Negative. My, that's my favorite band, no question. Ben Brinton, what are your opinions on post Joy Division related projects such as New Order, Peter Hook, and The Light, etc.? You know, I, uh, Gothcast, we didn't, you know, I think it's, I think it's when Robbie Gore, had to be when Robbie Gore still on. We did an episode on New Order. I like a lot of New Order stuff. Not all their, not all the new New Order, <laughs> but definitely the first few albums for New Order are really good. And I think they took a lot of the elements I liked from Joy Division and then kind of twisted it and made it their own thing. And I like, I like that sound a lot. Um, like Age of Consent and stuff like those, that stuff is just so good. Uh, and Peter Hook and the Light, I like Peter Hook and the Light. I think he's great. I think he has a lot of energy on stage. I think he's a good singer now. I think he puts, I I've always said that the worst thing you can be is boring in music. And Peter Hook and the Light is not boring. In fact, he seems way more energized than he ever has been. So I, I recommend looking up Peter Hook and the Light, their live stuff. It it's really good. Uh, Zeri Mafia. Zara Mafia. What's your favorite obscure goth related fact? I guess probably that the car from Black Planet, you know, the Sisters of Mercy Black Planet video is the monkeys mobile, the monkey car. You know, the band the monkeys. So that's a pretty cool fact. Bucky Jackrabbit says, What's your opinion on goth YouTube channels who mostly focus on halls and materialistic part of goth? Personally, I think they completely avoid the point of the scene and paint it in negative light. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I necessarily have an opinion on it. I guess, I guess my opinion would be that it just doesn't cater to me. I've been asked this question a lot, like what do I think about certain channels that focus on unboxings, hauls, you know, here's what I ordered this week, sort of stuff. Um, I get that they're not talking about the music. I get that they're not talking about in-depth things that interest them, that relate to goth. Um, but obviously they have an audience, you know, obviously they have people who would love to watch that and I totally understand that, you know, if your audience is demanding those sorts of things and you feel happy putting them out, then that's totally okay. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that certain people are going to watch them. A perfect example is a long time ago I was on a podcast and I talked a little bit about how, you know, making some videos, even though they may be really in depth and they may be fun to watch, are not very fun to make. Um, I could say that some parts of even making the Batcave video that I made were not very fun to make. You know, having to sit down that long and having to read all that stuff and put it together especially was a pain by the end of it. Even though I knew that in the end I would really like the video, uh, by the, a certain part of it, it wasn't fun to make anymore <laughs> because even though I knew it was gonna turn out really cool, when I finished rendering that video, I didn't wanna watch that video for a long time. Uh, so if a YouTube creator finds something that they can make that is fun for them to make, is interesting for them to make, and doesn't stress them out, and they don't have to, you know, like hyper-focus on it because it's exhausting to make, and you know, like a video is quick to make, and it's fun to make, and it's interesting for people to watch, and they enjoy it, then I totally get it, okay? So, will appeal to me? Not necessarily. So, yeah. Random Hero asks, who are your favorite goths in animation? Uh, probably Lucy Loud from Loud House. I know a lot of people like Raven from Teen Titans and stuff, uh, but uh, probably Lucy Loud and there's just some other characters in the Loud House where they're goth characters. And then there's Lydia Dietz from the Beetlejuice cartoon. It's awesome, and probably, I don't know if it counts, but you ever seen Scooby-Doo in the Ghoul School? Or, or Vincent Van Gogh from the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, where it's just a cartoon character is Vincent Price? I don't know, that, those are pretty cool. Sam Stevenson says, hey Dr. Sanders, is there any chance you and Robbie Gore will plan on pumping out any more Gothcast? I really enjoyed hearing your artist's deep dives over the years. You guys bring a lot of insight to the table when it comes to reviewing classic bands. As far as me and Robbie Gore directly working on podcasts together, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, if you've been 
catching up on the podcast, you probably realize that I've been making new ones with James, and that's probably how it's going to be done. I honestly haven't really even talked to Robbie Gore in a very long time, I, probably around a year almost. I mean, maybe one or two messages here and there, but we're not really that close anymore. Uh, our lives just kind of took two different you know, paths. Uh, and well, I think we did a lot of great things together and I hope in the future he does great things on his own. Uh, as far as us working together on something directly, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. So, uh, yeah, but I always hope to record more podcast episodes. Like I said earlier, I really like making them and I like, I, I like, you know, making them probably just as much as people like listening to them. So, yeah. Tony Ekman asked a dumb question. Why lack of makeup and shredded hair lately? Great channel, by the way. Tony F. Corpse. Astro Vamps, Willow Wisp, Salem's Lot, Black Heroin Gallery, Shameless Plugs. I know, that's okay. I'm okay with Shameless Plugs. I'm totally that kind of person. Uh, yeah, I explained that earlier. You know, just kind of having a different look at the moment. So, yeah. Victoria Lopez asks, What is your most hated misconception about goths slash the goth subculture? Congrats on hitting 2K. You're definitely one of the most unique goths on the site. Thank you, Victoria Lopez. I hate the idea that goths and you know, goth subculture, being goth, being into it, being into the music, is some sort of religious satanic association. I hate that. You know, there are plenty of goths I know who are atheists. There's a lot who I know who are Christian. Um, and just this idea that it is associated with Satanism and evil religious stuff, it is very frustrating. Yes, I do know some goths who are Satanists, but I would say more often than not, more of them are Christian. Uh, so I say that is the most frustrating thing the misconception about the goth subculture is that people, and you say, oh yeah, I'm into goth. They're like, oh my God, isn't that satanic or something? I was like, no, it's just stop. Like, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's frustrating. Seal Phantom Hive asks, what is your favorite gothic movie? I don't know, my favorite movie of all time is Blade Runner. My favorite goth movie of all time? It's a tough one. I mean, I, I don't know, I really like The Crow. And that's like probably one of the most goth movies ever made. If I could say something like Delicatessen, it might be Delicatessen. Or, I don't know, but probably probably The Crow for like how insanely goth that is. Uh, Nikita Indigo says, greetings. I've been a goth for a few years now. I've been playing with dead animal bones as a child. I want to ask how to start an oddities collection and even good, good goth record collection. Please make videos on goth culture more. Congrats on 2K subscribers. As far as taxidermy and oddities collections, I'm not an expert by any means, so I will refer you to the Wild Collection. They are an oddities store and could probably answer more questions than I possibly ever could. And as far as making more videos on goth culture, I, you know, I don't know if I'm necessarily the best person to make videos on goth culture. Like, I don't like getting involved in that argument a lot because I feel like no matter what you say, a lot of times people feel like you're either calling people elitists or you're calling people posers. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of people who make videos on goth culture. I feel like I could probably do it in my own way, but I, I tend to just focus on things that I enjoy, talking about them, reviewing them, put my own personal spin on it. Um, I may do more videos on goth culture, like in the scene as I see it right now, um, but I'm not really planning on it at the moment. Powis Newton. Hey there, doctor. I really enjoyed your channel and content. was wondering, are you a fan of the Rocky Horror Picture Show? And if so, have you ever attended the Midnight Showings? Kind of regards from UK. Yeah, I like the Rocky Horror Picture Show a lot. I have Blu-ray somewhere over there somewhere. And I, I, you know, I was working on a video on it, but I feel like so many people have covered the Rocky Horror Picture Show that why would anybody want to hear me talk about it? I have been to a screening of it uh, in Irvine. You know, it's always super fun. A lot of people don't even know that there's a sequel to that called Shock Treatment. And it's, the Shock Room is not as good as Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, I'm a fan of Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think it's awesome. And I don't really like musicals. So I think it's a good movie, even despite that fact. Like my two favorite musicals are probably, well, my favorite musical of all time is Little Shop of Horrors, but then very close second is The Wizard of Oz, the 1930s one. So yeah, there you go. Slayer did it better. Do you read comics? And if yes, what are some of your favorites? I do read comics. Some of my favorites are Sandman. I think that's great. I've all 10 volumes of that. 
And then they, you know, the spin-offs and like the weird one offs that are released every once in a while. I really like Doug Tenaples stuff, but I have to say that with a caveat because yeah, I know, like I think Doug Tenaple makes really good comics, but I think that I don't agree with a lot of, of his views on some things. Uh, you know, I really like Ghostopolis, Black Cherry, Creature Tech is amazing. Uh, so yeah, I like I like those comics, and Sin City is awesome. I have all the volumes of Sin City. Yeah, I, I've read a I've read a lot of comic books. Um, I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head that are like a series or someone in particular that I really enjoy. Obviously, the Crow stuff is really good. It's very different than the movies, which is which is good. It's, you know, it's all thing. K S, do you like black metal? Not particularly. I used to listen to uh, Venom, Venom's album, Black Metal. You know, the song Buried Alive and a few Venom songs like The Witching Hour and stuff. Like, that's okay, I'm, but I don't go out of my way to listen to Black Metal and I don't even like a lot of Venom songs, so I guess maybe a little bit? Yeah. Well, that seems to be all your questions. I think I got them all. This video is probably multiple parts. I don't know if it was. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get to know a little bit about me. Uh, I hope it, you found it interesting. I know Q&As can sometimes be kind of dry for people. Uh, and I hope this wasn't that. So enjoy. I got some videos coming up. I always have lots of videos coming up. It's always just a matter if I can make them the way I like them. So until next time. Make sure to say spooky and all those things. I felt like I was going to say something else. Then I, I just usually just end by saying spooky. Stay spooky.